Which of the following terms best describes the relationship between angle W and angle X? So, we're looking at angle W and angle X. And we have to notice that they're on the same side of that transversal. And they're on the inside, which is the interior. So we can't say it's corresponding because corresponding is same side, same position, and these two are in different positions. We can't say alternate interior because alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So the only one that it could be is same side interior angles. Now, we want to know which of the following pairs of angles are corresponding angles. So that same side, same position. So we have angle Z and X, Z and X. Those are on opposite sides of the transversal, so they're not same side. So we know it can't be A. B is angle T and angle X. So angle T and angle X. Those are on the same side and same position. So we know that it's B. And angle W and angle T are linear pairs. So they make a 180 degree angle. So that way they cannot be congruent. Number three. Which of the following pairs of angles are congruent? So we want to know is angle W and angle Z? So angle W and angle Z. Well, one's on the outside, the exterior, and one's on the inside, the interior. So we don't have one that says inside, outside, alternate, do we? So we know that it cannot be A and B. B, we want to know is angle Y and angle X, are they congruent? So those are linear pairs. So if they're linear pairs, they're supplementary, which means they add up to be 180 degrees. So it cannot be B. So let's double check angle W and angle Y. So are those? Congruent? Yes. They're corresponding angles, so they're congruent. So your answer is C. So make sure you're studying your angle pair relationships for this test. Number four. If a square has an area of 28 feet squared, what is the length of one side of the square? So we're wanting to know what the side length is when we got the area. Well, when we find the area, that's the side squared. So we want to do the inverse operation. So we're going to square root it. So we're going to take the square root of 28 and plug that into your calculators. And you should get roughly 5.29. And that is your side length rounded to the nearest hundredths. Number five. Karen was walking from her house to her friend's house, but needed to stop by the library to turn in her overdue library book. On the way home from her friend's house, she went straight home. How much shorter was her trip home than her trip to her friend? So we need to find her direct trip. And the only theorem we can use is Pythagorean theorem. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we'll go ahead and label this a, b, c. And we're looking for c squared, our hypotenuse. So we're going to square our two legs. So we have 20 squared plus 21 squared
so we get 800, 841, but we have to remember that that's squared. So in order to get, so we have c squared equals 841. So in order to get that hypotenuse, we have to take the square root and we get c equals 29. So our distance straight home was 29 feet. But we need to know how much shorter was her trip home than to her friend's house. So when she went straight home, she went 29 feet. But if she went all the way around, she did 20 plus 21, which equals 41. So in order to find how much shorter it is, we have to do 41 minus 29 and we get 12 feet. So make sure on some of these problems that you're reading the entire question because we're not just looking for the hypotenuse. We needed to know how much shorter her entire trip was. Using the information from the problem above, find how far Karen walked in all going from her house to the library, library to friend's house, then friend's house back to home. So we know from her house to the library, she went 20 feet. And then library to friend's house, she went 21 feet. So plus 21. And then back home, she went 29 feet. We have to add all those together because we're wanting to know the total distance she walked. After we add that, we get 70 feet. So her total walk was 70 feet. So make sure you read in all, and it even listed out for you, so you need to go step by step. Alright, what is the measure of angle B? So we're looking for this angle right here. So before we can do that, we have to find out what angle A is. And angle A is here. Well, its exterior angle is 117. And an exterior angle and its interior angle, the one that touches it, that's adjacent to it, are supplementary. So they're going to add up to equal 180. So 180 minus 117 is going to give us A. So when we subtract them, we get 63 equals A. So we know this angle right here is 63 degrees. So now we have to remember what our interior angles add up to be. Our interior angles add up to be 180 degrees. So we can take 63 plus 81, which is 144, and then subtract that from 180. and get 36 degrees, which would be your angle B. Now that's one way to go about it. So you can find A and then use that to find B. But we can also do it a different way. The other way we can approach this is remembering that we have an exterior angle and it's remote interior angles. So remember, it's the ones that are not adjacent to that exterior angle. And those remote interior angles add up to be the exterior. So we can say that 81 degrees plus B is going to equal 117 degrees. So therefore, we can solve it like an equation for B. And we can say we're going to subtract 81 from here. And whatever I do on the left side, I have to do on the right side. So I'm going to subtract 81 from the right side, and I get 36 degrees, which was my other answer as well. So this is a little bit shorter, but you can approach it either way, and you'll still get 36 degrees. 
which of the following is closest to the square root of 93? So all you're going to do is you're going to take in your calculator and plug in the square root of 93. And the square root of 93 equals approximately 9.6436 and so on. So all these answers are rounded to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, and I'm going to look at the one next to it. That 4 does not round it up, it keeps it the same. So I get 9.6, and that gives me the answer C. So remember when you're rounding, pay attention to what the answer choices are rounded to, and always look to the next place value. 5 or more, add one more. 4 or less, it stays there. Which of the following numbers is irrational? So we've talked about that. You cannot, irrational numbers you cannot make into a fraction and they do not repeat. So the only number that does not ever repeat the same here is pi. Because 16 over 4 is already made into a fraction. So that's rational. The square root of 9 is 3, and that's a whole number, so that's rational. And D, 3.99, that stops, so it could be turned into a fraction. So your only answer is C, pi. Charity bought a house with a triangular backyard pictured below. She bought a new puppy, so she needs to fence in the yard. How many feet of fencing does Charity need? So remember, to find the fencing, we're going to look at the outside of this backyard. So we're going to need the perimeter. But first we have to find this missing leg of the triangle. And it's a right triangle because that horizontal and vertical line meet and create that 90 degree angle. So hypotenuse is already given to us, it's 5 feet. So remember, if it's the hypotenuse that we're given, we're subtracting. So we're doing 5 squared minus 4 squared to find that missing leg, and we'll call it A. So we're looking for A squared. So when you do 5 squared minus 4 squared, which you can plug straight into your calculator, you get 9. So A squared equals 9. And we want to know what A is. We have to take that square root and we get 3 equals A. So that side here equals 3 feet. And remember that's a special right triangle, a 3, 4, 5. So you didn't even really have to do any work if you memorized it. So now we need to find the perimeter. So we're adding up all three sides. So we have three feet plus four feet plus five feet. And you can plug that straight into your calculator and you're gonna get 12 feet. She needs 12 feet of fencing for her yard. Using the information from problem 10, how much would the fence cost charity if fencing cost is $2.73 per foot? So we know we need 12 feet. In order to find per foot, we're just going to do 12 times $2.73. And just plug that into your calculator. And you're going to get $32.76. So we multiplied because we want to know per foot. Sergio and his son built a birdhouse, and he is going to place it in a tree in their yard. Sergio uses an 8-foot ladder, and the top of the ladder hits the tree at 6 feet. How far is the base of the ladder from the base of the tree? Draw a picture to help. Leave your answer as a square root, and then estimate the square root to the nearest tenth. Okay, so I'm going to draw my tree. Here's my tree. And there's an 8 foot ladder, so we'll change the color. Your ladder is 8 foot, 
And remember, when you have a ladder leaning at something, that's your diagonal. So you have eight foot, and it hits six feet up the tree. And we want to know how far the base of the ladder is from the base of the tree. So we're looking for x here. So we know when this vertical meets this horizontal, it creates a 90 degree angle. So we know that directly across from it is the hypotenuse. So what we're going to do now is subtract. So remember when we're given the hypotenuse, and we're searching for a leg, we always subtract using Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to do 8 squared minus 6 squared equals, since we labeled it x, we'll call it x squared. Remember, don't get caught up in the ABC. So 8 squared minus 6 squared is 28, but that equals x squared. So then we have to square root it. So we get square root of 28. So we want to, here's our square root, so there's one of our answers. And then we want to estimate the square root to the nearest tenth. So over here, I'm going to say this is, when we square root it, it's 5.29. We want to go to the nearest tenth. So we're going to look towards this 9. And we have to think, does this 9 round it up or stay the same? Well, it's 5 or more, add one more. So we're going to round up to a 3. So our other answer is 5 and 3 tenths feet. So we are wanting the square root and the estimated answer to the nearest tenth. Remember on these, always draw a picture because it helps you so much. Otherwise you might not know if we have the hypotenuse or if we have two legs. Grant is the catcher on his softball team. He knows from the he knows that the distance from the first to the second base is 70 feet. Second to third is 70 feet, and third to home is 70 feet. Approximately how far is is his throw from home plate to second base? So we did one similar to this on one of our homeworks, but we used a baseball field. Now we're using a softball field. So from first to second, so we're gonna say. This is our home plate, first, second, and third. So it says from first to second base is 70 feet. From second to third is 70 feet. And from third to home is 70 feet. So if all of these three sides are the same, this makes this one have to be 70 feet. We have a square. So approximately how far is his throw from home plate to second base? So we want to know from home plate to second base. So we've created a triangle, and we have two sides given to us. So we can use Pythagorean theorem. And we use Pythagorean theorem, we're going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know both the sides, and we're looking for this missing hypotenuse, so we're still going to add. So we're going to do 70 squared plus 70 squared equals c squared, which is going to be 9,800. And then we need to know, because that gives us c squared, so we need to know what c equals. So we take the square root of that, and we get 98.994. And it doesn't say what we want it to be, so let's run to the nearest hundreds. So if we look here at this 4, this all stays the same. So we have 98.99 feet. So remember, on this problem, we were given two legs and looking for the hypotenuse. So that's why we added... Number 14. A suitcase measures 24 inches long and 18 inches high. What is the diagonal length of, a, of the suitcase to the nearest tenth of a foot? So we're going to draw our suitcase. Kind of drawn out there for us, but I'm going to draw it again. So 24 inches long 
and 18 inches high. And we want to know the diagonal length. So this diagonal length. So if it's a rectangle, we know that this is a 90 degree angle. So we're looking for the side across from the 90 degree angle, which is our hypotenuse. So since we're searching for the hypotenuse, we're adding, we're doing our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we have 24 squared plus 18 squared equals c squared. And we're going to plug that into our calculator. And you'll get 900 equals c squared. And we have to take the square root of that, which is 30 equals c. So this is 30 inches. Well, we don't need to round it, so we know that this is 30 inches is our answer. So remember, we had two legs, we were looking for the hypotenuse, so you add. Okay, number 15. Oscar's doghouse is shaped like a tent. The slanted sides of it are both five feet long. The bottom of the house is six feet across. What is the height of his doghouse in feet at its tallest point? So it tells us that the whole side, or this whole base, is six feet. So if this line's going directly down the middle, that means that this is three, and this is three feet. So it cut it right in half, so we just divide six by two because we want them to be equal. So now we can use either side we want. So we have here, we'll decide directly across from the right angle is five feet. So we are given the hypotenuse and we're looking for a leg. So when we're given the hypotenuse and looking for a leg, we have to subtract. So we're going to do 5 squared minus 3 squared is going to give us that missing x, so x squared. But when you do 5 squared minus 3 squared, you get 16 for x squared. And then you have to square root it, which equals 4. So the height is 4. And look, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So remember, if you can remember 3, 4, 5, it'll save you a lot of time on some of these problems. We found the missing leg, and we were given the hypotenuse, so we subtract using our Pythagorean theorem. Number 16. To get from point A to point B, you must avoid walking through the pond. To avoid the pond, you must walk 34 meters south and 41 meters east. To the nearest meter, how many meters would you be saved if you were, if it were possible to walk through the pond? So it's already labeled for us. We didn't have to draw the picture. It gives us our 90 degree angle. So that we know the one across from it is our hypotenuse. So we know that the missing hypotenuse means that we have to add for our Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to do 41 squared plus 34 squared. Don't forget to square them. And we'll just label that C as C squared. And 41 squared plus 34 squared is 2,837, which is C squared. And remember, we have to square root it because we just want that side length. So we get C equals 53.26 and we want to the nearest meter, so that's our nearest whole number. So we're going to look here, and we want to look at the 2. Will the 2 round it up or stay the same? It stays the same because it's 4 or less. So we have 53 meters. Remember, we added because we were looking for the hypotenuse. All right, 17, find the measure of angle A, and 18 is going to be find the measure of angle B. 
So before we can find either one, we have to find and solve for y. So before we do that, let's talk about these. Angle A and angle B are remote interior angles to this exterior angle here, angle DCB. So they're going to add up to equal that exterior angle. So 4y plus 3y plus 22 equals 106. So we're going to solve for y. First we can combine our like terms. So we can say 4 plus 3, which is 7y plus 22 equals 106. So now we have our variable on one side, but we have a constant on both. So we need to get rid of this 22 on the left side. So we're going to subtract it because it's being added. We have to do the opposite. Whatever we do the left side, we have to do the right side. So we're going to subtract 22 and we get 84. So I'm going to bring everything down. 7y equals 84. Now I want to get y by itself. So when they're right beside each other like the 7 and the y are, it's multiplication. So we're going to divide by 7, so that leaves us with that y. And then we're going to divide 84 by 7, which gives us 12. So y equals 12. That doesn't give us the angle or anything, that just gives us what y equals. So now we can start solving for what each angle is. So like angle A. We want to know what that is when it equals 4y. So we have to substitute in y into the problem. So A equals 4y. So I'm going to substitute in 12 for y. And remember when they're right beside each other, it's multiplication. So I'm going to say 4 times 12, which equals 48. So the measure of angle A is 48 degrees. And we'll do this other one in red so we can tell the difference. So for angle B, we have 3y plus 22. Wherever I see that y, I'm plugging in 12. So 3 times 12 plus 22. So you're just substituting in when you see that y. And you get 58. So 58 degrees. And the way to double check that is plug in your calculator 48 plus 58 degrees and it should add up to be 106 degrees. Now we want to know what the measure of angle BCA is. So BCA. So we're looking for this interior angle here. Well this interior angle and its exterior angle are going to add up to be 180. They're supplementary. So in order to find it we can subtract 106 from 180 and that's going to give us what our interior angle is, and that'll be 74 degrees. So the answer for this one here is 74 degrees. So total for this page, you first have to find what y is, substitute y in every time you see it for each angle in order to solve for the entire angle. Alright, 20. What is the measure of the unlabeled angle in the triangle below? So the unlabeled angle of the triangle below. So first you have to think, what does the interior of a triangle add up to be? It always adds up to be 180 degrees. So first we have to figure out what the sum of these two other angles is. So we're going to do 72 plus 26, and that equals 98. So now that we know that, we can subtract that total, 98 degrees, from 180 degrees, and that will give us this missing angle. Well, when you subtract them, you get 82 degrees, which is B. So be careful, because if you just stop after you added them, like here, you got 98 degrees, that answer is there. So make sure you do all of the work.